All right, well, good morning. Welcome to today's budget hearing for the proposed fiscal year of 25-26 city budget. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce our interpreter who is sitting over here. Good morning, my name is Oscar Monroy. I'll be serving as your interpreter for today's budget hearing. Uh, buenos días, mi nombre es Oscar Monroy. Estaré sirviendo como su intérprete para la audiencia de presupuesto de hoy. Por favor, déjanos saber si necesita auriculares para el presupuesto de hoy. And then uh, the mayor would like to give uh, some comments, uh, followed then uh, by the councilwoman. Thank you so much. I'm Phoenix Mayor Kate Gago. Thank you for the gift of your time this morning, for caring so much about our city to participate in this important budget process. Thank you to our City of Phoenix employees who are here and work on your behalf every single day. I am excited to be here with the great vice mayor for our city, Councilwoman Deborah Stark, who has been working so hard for this community. Uh, we appreciate your feedback. Already there have been some clear signs in uh, uh, themes in the budget process, but we always learn something new throughout different issues. I'm going to confess, when I started my time in public life, I didn't know much about pickleball. And uh, <laughs> one year that was, that was dominant. Um, but I think there'll be also the real emphasis on topics that we always discuss from affordability to public safety as well. Uh, the city has been recognized for its budget process and it really does make a difference. So thank you for the gift of your time and I'll turn it over to the vice mayor. Thank you, and thank you all of you for being here. I really do appreciate it. Um, you know, we have a lot of special places in our city, but I will tell you, Sunny Slope is the most special part of our city, and I am really proud to represent Sunny Slope. I'm actually proud to represent all of District 3. There are so many great constituents in District 3, and I see them out there today, and I know they'll make some meaningful comments. They're very involved in uh, city government, and I appreciate it. I think I have probably one of the most active districts when it comes to constituents, and I do appreciate that. And so uh, we have such a great audience here today. I am going to limit uh, the comments to two minutes. I hope that's okay, um, because I know uh, that all of you have actual lives. You don't want to be here all day, so I, I appreciate it. And thank you again uh, for being here. Thank you, Mayor and uh, Vice Mayor Stark. Um, so before we begin, we're going to run a, a short video um, on the uh, Parks and Recreation Master Plan. The Master Plan will define the community's vision and, the, and guide the department's direction over the next 10 years and beyond. And the Parks and Recreation Department strongly encourages uh, feedback, resident feedback. And we do have uh, individuals here today, uh, Felicita Mendoza is in the back if you have specific questions about that. And there are other staff, Danielle Poveromo here and various other staff are here to talk to you about that if that's of interest to you too. So we'll uh, play the video now and then we'll get into the actual um, budget video. Welcome to the City of Phoenix Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Phoenix Parks and Recreation is dedicated to making Phoenix a better place to live, visit, and play. In this video, we will be answering three basic questions. One, what is a master plan? Two, what is the focus of Phoenix Parks and Recreation's master plan? And three, how can you get involved? First, what is a master plan? A master plan develops a clear purpose for our department and the vision for recreation facilities, programs, and services for the next decade. A master plan provides an opportunity to receive quality feedback and have meaningful engagement from the community. The Phoenix Parks and Recreation Master Plan will start in fall of 2023 and last approximately 18 months. Second, what is the focus of this master plan? As part of our master plan, Phoenix Parks and Recreation will be evaluating and taking inventory of all existing parks recreation programming and facilities with an emphasis on water conservation and crime prevention. We will also assess community demographics and recreation trends to ensure equitable access to programs and services and will evaluate how the department prioritizes funding. Lastly, how can you get involved? A large part of the master plan depends on you and your feedback. Phoenix Parks and Recreation will host community workshops, send out surveys, attend community events, 
survey neighborhoods and parks facilities, and work with community groups to receive feedback about our parks and recreation amenities and services. It's crucial to have public feedback throughout the entire process because, after all, our department serves thousands of Phoenicians every day. Thank you for being part of this journey as we pave the way for the next decade of Parks and Recreation Services, creating spaces for all. All right. Thank you for that video. Um, now we'll move into the uh, proposed trial budget. The feedback we received today is important as we finalize the proposed trial budget to present to the City Council. We want your input to be heard and considered before the budget is approved. The proposed budget will be presented to the City Council on May 7th and voted on May 21st. As presented to the City Council on February 27th and March 19th, the fiscal year 24-25 proposed uh, general fund budget includes a one-time $80 million surplus. Due to the state's action to eliminate residential, res uh, residential rental tax effective January of 2025 and to reduce the individual income tax rate to the current flat tax deficits are projected in both 25-26 and 26-27 fiscal years. Because the city is required to adopt a balanced budget, it is recommended to set aside the $80 million surplus to help balance fiscal year 25-26 budget. Again, if you wish to speak, there's cards in the back. Uh, please fill it out. If you don't want to speak but you want to write your comment, it's okay. You can mark no and, and put that on there and it will be recorded as well. Or you can use the Fund Phoenix uh, tool, Fund Phoenix tool. It's an online tool that can help you uh, provide direct feedback on the proposed budget, and it's available at phoenix.gov slash budget. Uh, so now we'll have a five-minute video that tells you about the budget. Some of the things I just talked about will re be reemphasized, and then we'll get into the actual comments. The City of Phoenix trial budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 proposed by the Phoenix City Manager is ready for public review and comment. A trial budget is a preliminary draft of the actual budget estimating resources and costs to deliver services to the community for the coming fiscal year. How does Phoenix's annual budget work? The City budget is made up of three funds, the General Fund, Enterprise Funds, and Special Revenue Funds. The general fund is made up of general sales tax, property taxes, revenue distributed by the state from income tax, sales tax, and vehicle tax, and some fines and fees. The general fund supports many of the core services our residents, visitors, and businesses have come to expect in Phoenix, including libraries, parks, senior and youth programs, and police and fire services. Enterprise funds include city departments that only charge the people who use their services directly, like water and sewer, airline passengers at Sky Harbor, and trash and recycling customers. Finally, special revenue funds earmarked for specific purposes from grants and voter approved sales taxes dedicated for parks and preserves, transportation and public safety. That's how Phoenix gets its money. Now, how do we spend it? Phoenix has a long history of responsible budgeting, ensuring resources are balanced to projected expenses each fiscal year. A top priority of the City Council is to ensure the public can engage in the budget development process every year, giving the community a voice in the future of our city. Residents have multiple opportunities to provide their input ahead of final budget decision making scheduled for May 21st. Each year, departments work with budget and research to estimate costs to deliver existing programs and services, and staff forecast what resources will be available to pay for services. The city manager then proposes a trial budget in March that identifies how resources should best be allocated to ensure a balanced budget each fiscal year and to achieve city council and community priorities. Then we ask for your input at community budget hearings in April by using the Fund Phoenix interactive budget tool available in English and Spanish or by contacting the city directly to ensure the budget reflects the priorities of our residents and city council. After receiving your input, the city council will vote on the budget in May and legally adopt the budget in June. State law requires the city's budget to be balanced, and this year, the 2024-25 proposed budget includes a projected one-time general fund surplus of $80 million. However, the state legislative and executive branches recently made decisions that reduced the city's tax base. 
Senate Bill 1131 eliminates residential rental tax, and Senate Bill 1828 reduced individual income tax rates. The total general fund estimated impact in fiscal year 2024-25 is $54 million, and for fiscal year 25-26, $86 million from the state's actions. Due to the estimated ongoing revenue losses, city staff is projecting future deficits in fiscal years 2025-26 and 2026-27. And it is for this reason the city manager is proposing to set aside and reserve the $80 million one-time surplus to ensure future budgets can remain balanced and to preserve existing programs and services such as police and fire, parks, libraries, neighborhood and human services, and other essential community programs that can continue to be delivered to the community. We encourage you to provide your input in whatever way works best for you. You can use Fun Phoenix, an interactive budget tool in English and Spanish that lets you provide direct feedback on the proposed fiscal year 2024-25 general fund trial budget, or by email at budget.research at phoenix.gov. You can comment to the city's social media pages at City of Phoenix AZ on Facebook or on X using hashtag PHXBudget. Or call us at 602-262-4800. The city manager will present his proposed budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 to Phoenix City Council on May 7, 2024. The council's budget decision will take place on May 21, 2024. All resident feedback will be shared with City Council so they may consider it before making final budget decisions. As a reminder, in November 2023, voters approved a $500 million general obligation bond program made up of 47 projects citywide. Projects include new and improved fire stations, parks, libraries, community and recreation centers, regional pools and splash pads, street and storm drain infrastructure improvements, projects for art facilities, and resources for affordable housing, renewable energy, and water efficiency projects. Geobond projects are paid for with secondary property taxes and projects are starting this summer. More information can be found online at phoenix.gov bond. Thank you for engaging in the budget process and helping build the Phoenix of tomorrow. All right. And now we'll move on to the comment cards. Um, and so I've got a, a couple of folks who have indicated they do not wish to speak, but I will read their cards into the record um, anyway. Uh, Jim DeRoos uh, would like to see a traffic light at Cave Creek Road and Desert Cove uh, because it's a dangerous intersection. Mike Peppera. Um, there's been an increased interest in participation in our parks and preserves. Let's keep funding high for these departments. And then our first speaker will be Pamela Jimenez Runner. And if you can come up to the um, microphone up here, um, that way the, the uh, stream and the video will show and, and hear your comments. Hopefully I'll explain this right. There was a program, as far as I know, to gate uh, the alleys, they were closed. Um, I recently found out that they took the program away from the alleys that are owned by the people that back up to the alleys. Um, there's some alleys in Sunny Slope that I know for a fact the police have been called so many times. And it seems to me that the fee that the police are being paid to come out to the alleys is way over what the gates would cost. So these particular alleys that are closed, that are open for the utilities, uh, they have homeless in them doing drugs, fighting, doing all kinds of things. And it seems to me that there should be gates on these alleys that the homeowners own to protect the homeowners and the public. And I hope I explained that right. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. We might actually have representation from NSD. They uh, manage the gated alley program, so maybe they can get with you, Pamela, and chat about it. Thank you. All right. Our next speaker is, looks like, Teresa Hill. Good morning and thank you. Um, I may not be great as a speaker. You will find that out soon. Uh, 
I'm here to speak on the seniors who are homeless. There's over 2,000 homeless seniors, and I thank Haven 2 for opening. I'm excited about that, but it's not enough. We have half a million. There are so many people out there, I don't think we are counting them all, quite honestly. Um, we have an $80,000 surplus. And I'm asking you to help with these items to give half 40 million. And I'm asking for the homeless seniors to be a priority in this city, for legal aid to stop and help them from being taken advantage of evictions. For our fire department, who's struggling with the heat, it's gonna be 90 today. The city has grown. I wouldn't want to wait nine to 10 minutes for a child drowning or for somebody having a stroke or a heart attack. I'd like more grant writers. There's federal, state, and county, and it's hard to get that money. We need some grant writers that will help us for next year. The part of the budget I'm concerned about is a half a million dollars on a pilot program for public property cleanup. We have people dying on our streets. I understand that this was requested in 2020, but we're in 2024, and I feel that this is a crisis. I just thank you for listening to us. I thank you from the seniors, and I just thank the people. We have great people in this district, and I'm proud to be part of this district. Thank you. Thank you. You did an excellent job at speaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next speaker is Lisa Glow. Good morning, Vice Mayor, Deputy City Manager, and City Staff. Today I'm wearing two hats to talk, to talk about homelessness. Um, first, I want to sincerely thank you as a resident in this district for your humanitarian efforts with support for the new CBI 100 bed homeless shelter for summer heat relief and so much more. As we just heard, we know there's a lot more that needs to be done, but the neighbors and local businesses I know are all very happy with your efforts, so thank you. Secondly, I wanna speak as the CEO of Central Arizona Shelter Services. And as Arizona's largest homeless provider, last year we served nearly 7,000 people, which was a 4% increase over the prior year. The year before that, it was a 34% increase. These numbers will again rise when we open up the senior haven with 170 new beds for the 55 and older population, and we can't get it open fast enough. With the continuing rise in need and our expansion of services, we're asking for your support in this year's budget for our two main shelters. First, for our Sunny Slope Family Shelter, which has operated for 35 years in Phoenix. It's the second largest emergency shelter after UMOM. The vast majority of residents here are from Phoenix that we serve. Family homelessness is also on the rise and we're asking for a budget allocation of 450,000 to help us keep open at the levels needed. This shelter is unique because we can serve large families and 65% of our residents are children. Second, we're asking for an increased amount on our contract with the city for our adult shelter that expanded to 600 beds, 24 seven services, and added client empowerment and employment programs. We're truly grateful for your recent support and the inflation factor to the contract of 169,000, bringing our contract to just over 1 point million. Last calendar year, we served over 4,700 adults, nearly uh, between 70 to 80% of all of those adults are Phoenix residents. For case management, 79% of all of our one-to-one -one case management are Phoenix residents. 68% of all our services, um, service support of Phoenix residents. And we're asking you to add another 453,000 to our contract for a total of 1.5 million. Um, this funding will allow us to hire six case managers and pay for our increasing rent and maintenance cost on the key campus, as well as inside the shelter where maintenance costs have also gone up from serving 600 people. The current amount of support from Phoenix is about 18% of our budget, and this will slightly increase that overall. Um, to conclude, we're delivering more than ever to more people with rising costs. We're serving more adults than any other provider. We're, we have the second largest homeless shelter for families, and homelessness is still increasing. With the ARPA cliff and other um, declines in funding, we really need your help more than ever. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next speaker, Marcy Lynn. Hi, everybody. Okay, my name is Marcy Lynn and I live right around the corner here. I'm also a community advocate. And so a couple of the things, number one is public safety um, that I definitely, we need money towards. Phoenix is the hub for child sex trafficking and child porn. We have three officers. We don't have any officers in the auto theft. None, zero. So you see a lot of the homeless on the street. I'm not talking about the seniors, they're on drugs. The police cannot arrest them because we don't have enough. I've had to call 911 several times. I've had to call non emergency. And I know how long it takes because we don't have enough operators. So we need more police. We need more police volunteers. We need more operators. And if we have to give them a raise, we need to do that. Also, last year, I just want to real quick with the traffic control. I was hit on Cave Creek Road um, by somebody sideswiped me. I had a concussion on my head and I lost vision to my left eye. It formed a cataract, I had to have a surgery. I was basically unfunctionable for a whole year because of it. And if we had more officers, if we had traffic control, if we had red light, can if we had something, that wouldn't happen to me. Also, I am an advocate, thank you, Lisa, for bringing that up, for the homeless seniors. Um, and I happen to live in one of the senior buildings downtown, and now I live up here, but um, we do not have resources for them. I can get every single drug addict off the street, into treatment, into housing. We have thousands of beds available. We do not have beds available in places available for the family shelter, but for also what Lisa was bringing up with for the seniors, and that's the low income and the homeless seniors. They're being priced out. Section 8 needs to be opened up. It's been opened up before. We did that for Deck Park for the, the seniors living there a couple of years ago. And thank you very much. Thank you. Tim Kenobi. Good morning. Uh, Mayor Gallego, Vice Mayor Stark, uh, Inger, rest of the city staff, uh, thank you for having us today. My name is Tim Kenobi. Uh, I live in District 3. I also uh, work in District 3. I'm a fire captain at Station 27 up the street. Um, I'm a member of the United Phoenix Firefighters as well. Uh, we're here today to raise awareness for our Phoenix Fire Crisis campaign. Um, and the fact that we're here uh, shows how serious we are about um, this crisis and the dire consequences. Uh, response times in Phoenix are nearing nine minutes. Okay, that's well above the average, the national standard of five minutes. Okay, it sees extra minutes and extra seconds uh, that can be the difference between the life and death of a loved one or yourself. Um, in this neighborhood, in this council district, the average ambulance response time is 10 minutes and 19 seconds. All right? In Sunny Slope, uh, Engine 7, just down the street, is one of the busiest fire trucks in the country. Not just the city. It's the busiest fire truck in this city, but it's also one of the busiest in the country. It runs over 5,500 calls a year. Okay? Anything over 4,000 calls in a year is considered extremely high, which means when engine seven is on a fire call somewhere else, a neighboring fire truck has to come in and that increases response times. Okay, so to effectively reduce response times, we need more resources. We need more firefighters, more paramedics, fire trucks and ambulances. We're not asking for uh, raises in our paychecks. We just want more firefighters, more paramedics, fire trucks and fire stations. Okay, so we're here asking the community to support our elected leaders in making tough decisions to find these resources. Um, I've got some flyers with me in, in the back for more information, so uh, please visit our website. And I thank you for your time and listening and your support. Thank you, Tim. On, on a separate note, Tim and I both started our careers as lifeguards, and so lifeguards we are always looking for. So please, if you have anybody who's interested in being a lifeguard, Thank you for mentioning. My kids still go to swim lessons at the pool I was a lifeguard at, so. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Great city programs, um, and again, I'm a product of that, and so is Tim. All right, Letitia Levant. Hi, I'm here in support of the Phoenix Firefighters also. I have a son who's on the department. I have 
a long history of family members, my brothers, my nephews, my um, brother-in-law. So um, it's they've been on the fire department for a long time, but my son is now currently. And he's made me aware of the crisis that they're having. They don't have enough stations around the city. They need more stations built. They need more firefighters um, to respond to the to the emergencies, like um, Tim said, that you know, what if it was one of your family members? Would you want to wait 10 minutes? I mean, um, n normally it should only take five minutes. And with our city growing the way it is and the influx of people, we need to keep up in the fire department and the police department. So I would like to ask you to please give these firefighters what they need so they can do their job effectively and properly. Um, they work very hard. They get hardly any sleep being on calls, you know, all the time. So I would ask that you would do that for them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next uh, individual who doesn't want to speak, Jacqueline. Uh, Phoenix City Library and Branches are a vital community integrator. The launch of the Bookmobile program is essential for library deserts. The next uh, individual who, do, who does wish to speak is Patricia Ford. And again, while Patricia's coming up, if you do want to speak, uh, there are comment cards at the back, so uh, please get those uh, filled out and we will call you uh, when it's your turn. Hi, my first complaint is the tool. I couldn't tell directly where what funds went where. Um, our concern from our block watch recently is that same corner, Cave Creek and Desert Cove. There's been one fatality we know of, several accidents. I didn't know Marcy was there, so that means another one. Um, we did have a speed study. and So this is not just for our street, but for traffic. We need to know how to get money to traffic and police and the firefighters, please. But we couldn't tell how to use that tool, what directly goes to what department. That corner, we did have a speed study. It was averaging 57 miles an hour and some clocked at 70. So, um, oh, and the motorcycle shop and two other businesses have been run into. That's where the concern started, but all these things are concerned. And I, not looking at understanding that tool, I didn't know the money was going for uh, business cleanups. I mean, yeah, it might be nice, but we have more urgent needs. I want to see money to go to these things. And we represent 300 people. Our block watches, uh, really, we've had quite a bit of, of activity on these items. So please support fire, roads, and the police department. Very good. And I think there are, there are people from budget and research that can help you if, if that's something of interest to you. Um, and they're in the back. Oh, and the email is real small in the box. OK. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Our next speaker is, I'm sorry, doesn't wish to speak, Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte, again, uh, is uh, commenting about the library and bike lanes. So library services and bike lanes. Uh, James, uh, have you decided, James, if you would like to speak? Uh, okay, James would like to speak. <laughs> yeah, I did, I, I did not want to, you're right. Uh, traffic on Central, but go ahead and, and give us your comments. And you can pronounce your name for us too. V Duffer. Uh, Thank you. I was amazed because I, I, was, I was seeing all this traffic and parking <clears throat> along Central. <clears throat> especially on the bridal path. I called uh, vice mayor's office and I thought, well, a couple weeks I'll get a call. But that afternoon, I got a call. I think it was Amber. Amber. She, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the problem is uh, not only traffic, which has always been speeding along Central, uh, but also the parking because now on Butler and Orchid, and I don't know the residents, I live right by there, but I sure wouldn't want another 40 people parking in front of my house. Uh, I don't know if there is a solution, as, but, so not only do we have uh, uh, people speeding a little more, I think a little more traffic, a lot of parking along the side streets and parking on the bridle path, which was kind of my initial 
complaint. You know, they can't park on the bridle path. And we know uh, much, Oso, great place, great place, but they have limited parking. And I think, I don't know what the solution is. I don't think it's gonna be a hawk light. I just learned that term. Uh, I don't think you can put speed bumps on central, maybe a crosswalk. <clears throat> uh, a young lady was biking across a week ago, lost her hat, <laughs> I saw the car coming, but she got her hat, got across. So with all the people crossing the street, <clears throat> maybe a crosswalk, maybe a hawk light, or maybe just more enforcement along there for a while to keep people slowing down. Thank you. Thank you. And if I can just comment, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Uh, I'm really concerned about the bridle path because that is it, uh, designated historic. So we're going to have our historic uh, preservation office also look into the issue. And I agree with you. I'm glad that also a success, but it is causing some parking problems. So we're definitely looking into that. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Our next speaker, A.J. Mars Marsden. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. I've listened in to a few budget hearings, and I've been to a few, and everyone has great ideas. Um, it's not caught on camera, but I'm usually back of the room just nodding yes, and even at home when I'm watching it, I'm just nodding yes. So um, thank you for all the great ideas to the city. Um, one thing that I want to talk about this morning is the um, volunteer department of the city of Phoenix. I think really building up our volunteers now as we go into the next few years with a budget deficit would be a great use of our um, funds right now. Matter of fact, the volunteer department might even be able to get a volunteer to help them. Many departments don't need a full 40-hour person, and there's lots of people with interests all over the city. Um, you know, we always hear about police and fire, public works. I mean, people might be interested in water, trash, and recycling. Um, aviation, um, streets department. A lot of us have become experts on the street departments just from um, some of the complaints that we've put in. I feel like I could answer the phones <laughs> at the streets department. Um, council districts might be able to use some volunteers as well as housing and homeless services. They might be able to use a volunteer or two. Neighborhood services, think of all the things that neighborhood services does. They can probably use a few hours of volunteer work. And also we have so many bilingual citizens. With the myriad of languages spoken in Phoenix, it would be great if we could really tap in to some of our bilingual residents just to help get some information out. So basically, any department that we've asked to put in a cut of funding, they might even be able to put in a recommendation for a few hours of volunteers. And then anyone that has a few hours can become a volunteer. Um, I am an official a City of Phoenix Police Department volunteer, so I know the benefit that I give the police department basically for no cost to the City of Phoenix. So I do hope that we can really build up our volunteer program here in Phoenix. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia Graber. Hello. Uh, my name is Cynthia Graber. Uh, my family's lived in Sunny Slope for over 62 years. Um, I am a neighborhood advocate. Um, I'm on VIP Coalition. I'm on 19 North. I'm on a Block Watch Captain. I'm on 23rd Avenue pa um, Task Force. I'm, I help with Haven. I, I do whatever I can for the betterment of Phoenix and my neighborhood because I love Phoenix. Um, I would like to thank our city manager for a well-developed budget, and I am in 100% support. It is beyond prudent to carry forward the $80 million surplus. We don't know what's happening this year. There's lots of things that are unknown, and it's very prudent to keep that $80 million intact. I would like to support funding for the Assistant City Attorney 3 position to support the 19th Avenue Safety Plan. Police patrols to respond, um, to, respond to calls for service and the Special Projects Administrator to provide relevant navigational services to the refugees. 19th Avenue in Glendale has been known as the Bermuda Triangle. City of Phoenix Housing, Slumlords, Methadone Clinics, and Light Rail got us here. We are really fortunate right now because we have City of Phoenix leadership that has Council 3, 4, 5, and 6. Think about that. Think about what we can accomplish now. <laughs> um, 
Neighborhood leaders have been working endlessly with our city executive management, police, housing, neighborhood services, methadone clinics, light rail, and soon our city and county attorneys to get back on track. In the past 15 years, our area has dealt with zero accountability from our government, our nonprofits, and our for-profits. It is now we desperately need all city divisions to work together for the welfare of our children and our seniors. We are so thankful to be working with our city executive management, police, neighborhood services, housing, and law on the CSP program. Thank you, City of Phoenix. Um, the other area that I really like to talk about that, that you all have kind of addressed um, is in regards to traffic safety and neighborhood traffic programs. A lot of this, those programs were developed in 2020, 2021. It's affected my area. Um, those are old decisions. We need to revise and make new decisions. This program needs to be evaluated. Prior to Hawks being installed in neighborhoods, traffic needs to involve the community, the adjacent businesses, police, and fire. We recently had a Hawk installed on uh, Glendale Avenue. There was not any community outreach to the adjacent businesses, very large retirement communities, neighborhood associations, lock watches, police, or fire. We continue to have jaywalkers. It was the hawk was in the wrong position. The position of the hawk is a nuisance to the traffic and the impact to our neighborhood is immeasurable. So just want to put that one out there too. It needs to be revised. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Julia Tagnet? Tag Tigart? Yes, Tigart. Hi, it's good to see you again, Vice Mayor and the Mayor of Phoenix. Um, so I'm here about historic preservation. As you guys know, I went to the City Council meeting in January and told you guys about Mystery Castle with the demolition permit. Um, I've been the only one advocating for it. I know District 8 advocated it for it at their community budget meeting. So many people in the historic preservation world are just giving up. They're burnt out. They keep telling me, Julia, I'm retiring. I don't want to do this anymore. It's a hard fight. And it is a really, really hard fight. Here in Sunny Slope, we gave our tuberculosis tent to the Museum of Cave Creek. We don't even have anything of tuberculosis here anymore. We've gotten rid of so many historic homes. We had a Navajo co-talkers home that got destroyed, and there's going to be a triplex there. I mean, I'm trying to fight to save all the historic buildings we have in Sunny Slope, but it's really, really hard. And I would love to see some of the city's budget go to saving Mystery Castle. We only have three castles left in the city of Phoenix. We have Tovera Castle, which in 2010, the city of Phoenix residents advocated for funds to go to that, and they saved it. And then volunteers run that castle. We have Camelback Castle, which is a private residence that I don't think anybody will be able to tour soon. And then we have Mystery Castle, which has been there since 1930, because Boyce Luther Gill built it from 1930 to 1945 and it's been open to the public we've had visitors come from all over to see that castle and with that demolition permit going to expire in November we need funds to go to that to save it so that way it can be a part of the city and more people can tour it because that is a resource we will not get back we will not be able to rebuild that and if we lose that property we're losing another historic piece of Phoenix and it's already a battle as the Al Beetle house was going to be destroyed that demo permit got pulled the Millam Textile Building, it's a battle. We've lost, I think, four buildings that were 100 years old sold in Phoenix. We don't even have a Phoenix Historical Society or a museum. We used to have one, but it's gone. Tempe has one, Mesa has one. Every other city has a historical society except for us. We don't have a museum. It went to the Arizona Science Center. I would love to see funds go to historic preservation so we can save more Phoenix history. And I live in Sunny Slope, and I work with the Sunny Slope Historical Society. I'm going to continue trying that. Again, of traffic safety, I know I brought it up to you guys. East Hatcher Road, four people have died on. I did the entire speed study. We were supposed to get speed humps. We couldn't get speed humps because we had a drainage problem with hills. I talked with the city of Cave Creek, their traffic department. They had the same issue. And I've had other block watches in the area complain to me. I know a motorcycle was stolen. It was ran into my neighbor's front yard. Another kid was speed racing, ran through a backyard twice. I mean, it's just so bad, all the traffic issues that we have going on. I know Cave Creek and Desert Cove, it's terrible there. People have gone hit. It's like playing goose. So I would love to see other traffic measures in place. And the firefighters, I don't know if anybody knows this, only 2% of firefighters are women in the United States, 4% in the state of Arizona. And I know when my father was assaulted, the response time was 27 minutes. And those were the worst 27 minutes of my life because I didn't know if he was going to die. 
So I would love to see funds go to the fire department because they do such an amazing job and they need more help. You know, and I know there's women trying to be firefighters, and I would love to see that number increase from 4% to 10, 20%. And I appreciate all you do and having us speak and tell you our thoughts, and I hope to see all these implemented in the new budget. Thank you. Our next speaker, Annie Eldon. Good morning, Vice Mayor and City Manager Erickson and all city staff here. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for hosting this meeting and thank you, Vice Mayor Stark, for attending the virtual meeting last year and this year. Um, that was something I really fought for, so I really, really appreciate that and I really appreciate that we had more this year. Um, I am the president of Phoenix Spokespeople. We're a uh, nonprofit that tries to make Phoenix and streets in Phoenix safer for bicyclists to ride around on. And I'm here to ask for a few things on their behalf. First of all, please ensure that there are funds to continue to build protected bike lanes on 3rd Street from Lincoln to Roosevelt. South Phoenix is still quite segregated from the rest of Phoenix, and this bike lane is one way to begin to build a connection. It also furthers the goal of creating a north-south bikeway. Next, please continue to fund complete streets by creating a designated complete streets position in the streets transportation department. Uh, complete streets is a program to try to make streets safe for everyone on the road, whether it, they are driving, whether they are biking, walking in, in a wheelchair, et cetera. And so that's it sounds like there's a lot of traffic issues up here, so I really hope that we can uh, support that more to make it safer for everyone. Uh, also, please continue to fund and implement project suggestions from the Phoenix CAN program. Um, this is a fabulous program that really involves the community. Um, I'm not sure when it'll be coming to Sunny Slope, but be on the lookout. Uh, connected, connected Active Neighborhood, I believe it is called. Um, but yeah, if you look up Phoenix Can online, you should be able to find it. Um, they recruit community members to talk with other community members, look around, take surveys, everything to find out exactly what are the issues in your neighborhood and try to fix them. And um, this is through the streets department, so please continue to support that. I, I really appreciate that program. And then also in general, we would like to have a designated fund for completing quick build projects. Uh, these can be things as simple as paying in bike lanes on an extra wide street or adding in a crosswalk sign. And many of these could stem from the Phoenix CAN project, um, which uh, could be a big benefit for that. So um, thank you again for hosting this. We realize the budget is very limited and precious and there are many things that need to be funded. Uh, supporting these requests by Phoenix spokespeople would create a safer, more enjoyable space for all our residents. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, the next card is Patrick Cunningham, who uh, does not wish to speak and says Phoenix fire crisis. Uh, the next card is Mary Jo Winters, and she would like to see the city of Phoenix uh, install a traffic light at Desert Cove and Cave Creek. The next speaker, Sam Johns Johnson. Sam? Oh. Hello, good morning, and uh, thank you all for making the time for this forum this morning. Uh, I work on the key campus downtown, but today I'm just speaking as a resident of the Sunny Slope neighborhood, and I am here to speak on homelessness, heat relief, and emergency response services. So we've already heard, I think, some really, really wonderful ideas today and some really wonderful support for emergency response services and supporting our homeless neighbors. Um, I really am here to just lend my voice that there is a lot of feeling and support behind that in this neighborhood. I think that you know, to see people sleeping at bus stops, to see people sleeping in alleyways, and um, knowing that last summer, I think it was 645 people perished 
from heat-related illness it is, in my mind, just unacceptable. And I think that as a community, we have the ability to do better. I see that the city of Phoenix is already doing a lot of really incredible things in this direction. I've seen the, the SOS lot downtown, the safe outdoor space. I know that there's the, the Maricopa County Heat Relief Network, which started up last summer, and I, I would love to see more efforts in this vein. I would love to see more support for our fire departments who, um, when I sit in on the safety committee meetings downtown and I hear that um, they're required to respond to every single call. And if somebody just needs a bottle of water, that, that is an emergency. That person really needs that bottle of water to survive. But we don't necessarily need to send a whole fire truck. We could send more you know, crisis response teams. We could send more um, just heat relief response teams. I think that there are some really, really in, uh, pardon me, I get, pardon me. Um, I think that if we, if we could find it within ourselves to have a little bit more compassion for our homeless neighbors and to have a little bit more creativity in how we collaborate to solve these problems, I think that we could really do some incredible things as a community. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our last comment card uh, also talks about, uh, from Richard, uh, talks about putting a traffic light at Desert Cove and Cave Creek Road. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to the vice mayor. Thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate all your um, comments today. Uh, as you all know, traffic safety is a huge issue to me as well. We see so many sad stories about pedestrian fatalities and red light fatalities. And so I am, I'm very hopeful that we can address some of those issues. Again, heat relief is important as well. We do live in the desert. We do need to look out for um, other residents that are more vulnerable. So I appreciate all your comments on that. And yes, I know all about Cave Creek and Desert Cove. I'm looking at Pat, she's the instigator, but I appreciate you bringing out your neighborhood. And I know Streets is here and I think they heard loud and clear. So again, thank you everyone for your comments. Um, and I appreciate it. That's what makes our budget process so vital is hearing from all of you. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes our uh, uh, budget hearing today. Thank you for being here and thank you to the staff and all your hard work. If you are interested in talking to somebody about a specific item, there's, th there's staff from every single department here. So thank you.